Today we are going to be doing my, you know, annual, biannual, whatever it ends up being, evaluation on how well I did on my five star predictions. Now why I keep doing this I don't know because I'm really, really not good at it. Also, I'm waiting for my hair to dry and I'm in progress on a bunch of chores so here we are. But uh, I thought while I was waiting I would talk to you guys about this. So uh, we're going to check in on how I did on my five star predictions. My guess is not well, but I honestly don't remember. I remember two of the books in that first round. So I'll throw you to a different Mara to react to those books. See you in a minute. Okay guys, I have been running the numbers this morning. So let me give you the update. Interesting findings. So you know what? We now have three years worth of data um, because I don't remember if I figured this out pre-2020, but whatever. We're just going to start with three years worth of data. So little line chart here. If we go with apples to apples in terms of books that I picked, my average for 2022 for like the last round of five star predictions is right in the middle of where we were in the previous two years. So for 2020, we were at 4.07. For 2021, we were at 4.18. And for this round, we were at 4.13. I am excluding a book that I have deferred reading for reasons we'll talk about. If I did include that, the average would have dropped down to 3.3. But I don't think that's fair because I didn't actually DNF this book. I just realized it's not the right book to start with. So let's talk about the actual books. So the ones that I picked, the ones that are apples to apples, I picked Parable of the Sower, which is very funny for reasons that you're uh, about to find out. And I gave that four stars. Really liked it, really beautiful writing, solid book, but didn't quite, you know, not an all-time favorite, but a very good introduction to Octavia Butler. The Good Luck Girls, actually very similar thoughts. Four stars, very strong writing. For whatever reason, it didn't have that kind of like X factor that would make me just absolutely love it, but it is a dystopian, both of those were actually dystopias, um, dystopian YA Western fantasy kind of deal. Um, and it was really strong. Really, really liked it. Would read more from that author, but not quite five stars. The Word is Murder, I just recently read. And I don't even think you guys have heard me talk about this one yet. So newsflash for you guys, but I enjoyed it. But so it's a it's a mystery from Anthony Horowitz, where he is a character in the book. And there's like this fictitious detective that he is helping and he's like going to write this person's story and he's following him along on this investigation that he's helping with. And I think I would have liked this book more if I had not previously read The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz. So that is his, he was commissioned by the Arthur Conan Doyle estate to continue Sherlock, like to write new Sherlock mystery. And it was good, not a favorite. I would also give that one four stars. The Word is Murder reads, like the character of Horowitz reads so much like the Watson. The character of Hawthorne reads so much like the Sherlock. They're so similar that I think I just found that a little bit distracting in terms of character differentiation between books. Um, the, mur the mystery itself I thought was like fun. He, you know, he used to write for Midsummer Murders. He's, he's good at just like a good old whodunit. Um, so it was good, but anyway, I'll talk more about that in my minimum check-in, but yeah. So I gave that four stars and then Barchester Towers, I gave four and a half stars too. I thought that was absolutely delightful. Not a surprise. That is a classic and I find Anthony Trollope's writing so delightfully readable. It's just really wonderful. And it's also just like nerding out about church politics, like in history, which is fun. So then the third, the fifth one that I picked was Crystal Soldier by Sharon Lee and Steve Miller. This is in the Lyodin universe, which is the like one of the main inspiration points for Nalini Singh writing the Sight Changeling series. So it's a series I've wanted to try. And you guys warned me about this. And you're right. Um, you know, who am I to take warnings from people? But when I picked it, people were like, Oh, I don't know that you should start there. Even though it's chronologically the first one, it's not like so in the, the world in the universe, 
this is the earliest chronologically, but it's one of the latest books written. And I was trying to get into it and I was really struggling. So I think that I would need to get more into the world before I go back and read it. So now I need to figure out what the actual book I should start with is. So if you have ideas about that, please let me know because I'm very, I was doing some like research on the Wikipedia page. It's very confusing. So if anybody could tell me where I should start <laughs> with this series, please let me know and I will actually listen to you this time. But for the reason that I'm not ready to read that book, I bumped it out of this prediction list. So I really ended up only reading four books. So those were my picks. The ones that um, I read based on the recommendation of my patrons, the average of that was four stars. So actually a little lower, which surprised me because there was a little bit more variability there but two four and a half stars from that. So the fifth season by N.K. Jemison and Empire of Pain by Patrick Ryden Keefe, whatever that guy's name is. Both of those were great. Uh, we Ride Upon Sticks. I kind of feel like I need to retrospectively go back and give that a four and a half because I think about that book a lot and I really, really did enjoy it. I think it just kind of pacing wise fell apart a little for me towards the end. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that should be a four and a half. And then I gave three and a half stars to The Yellow Wallpaper, which is a classic collection of short stories. I uh, really like the title story, which is what's most known from that collection. The rest of it was a little hit or miss. And then My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, I gave three and a half stars to, which is the lowest I've ever given to a Grady Hendrix. I still enjoyed it though. Um, it just was not my favorite from him. So with that being said, how we did in the past is kind of like average, it seems like overall for this round. And uh, yeah, let's kick it back to what we are gonna read next for this little ongoing series where I never actually pick, I, I never actually have five stars that I pick from this, I feel like. I'm trying to think if I've ever, I must have had at least one at some point in my history of doing this, but I am just genuinely not good at picking <laughs> what's gonna be five stars for me. So let's see this next round. Let's just, you know, pretend like this is actually gonna happen. Let's see the TBR. Okay, and don't know how I did with those, but you guys know before I do. So here is my stack of five books. I will say I liked that approach of only doing five books in a, in a batch. Um, and let me know if you guys would be interested in me doing another round of letting like my patrons and members pick five star predictions for me. Maybe I could go back and like take a look at the last time they did that, the ones that I didn't end up picking. Let me know if that would be interesting to you guys because yeah, I think you guys did better than I did. But again, the other Mara will let you know how that actually went. Okay, but all that being said, I am gonna pick five books again this time. So those five books are Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Now, actually, this was, I believe, on that list of five-star predictions from my patrons. So I guess I'm kind of cheating here by picking one of their picks. But um, I do think that this is has potential because this is sort of pitched as a literary, like a more literary version of a genre romance. And I could see that being a real winner for me. The last one of those I read that did work really well for me was Okweke Amezi's you Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. Um, I gave that one four and a half stars. And then I've, I've liked a lot of what Emily Henry does, which is not maybe literary exactly, but is more, it, like it has less of the writing conventions of genre romance, even if it has a lot of the plot stuff of a genre romance. So anyway, I'm hopeful that this one could be a big hit for me on the strength of liking some of those other ones in that realm. Then, actually three of these are mysteries, so I'll save the, those for last, I just realized that. Um, I'm picking a parable, The Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler because I've heard, so I really like Parable of the Sower, I gave that four stars, but I've heard from a lot of people that this is the, the part of that duology that makes it a masterpiece. So I'm thinking that if that's the case, if I enjoyed Parable of the Sower, if I gave it four stars, maybe this could be five stars. I feel like that's pretty sound logic. And then three mysteries. So two of them are gonna be in my Japanese mystery video. I haven't decided, I don't think it's gonna be a vlog. I think it may be a like discussion-y kind of video where we talk about like 
what are the similarities and like have I found anything that I can say feels like sort of the Japanese perspective on mystery the same way that there's sort of like a Scandi perspective on mystery or an English perspective on mystery. So anyway, but these are the two I'm calling out as I the two I think I have the highest chance of really liking because both of them are some version of either an isolation trope or a locked room mystery. So the Decagon house murders sounds like a version of and then there were none like straight up this sounds like and then there were none this one i believe is a locked room mystery yeah okay yeah yeah so the crooked so okay i'll tell you exactly what this one is the lone the lonely rockbound island of sunojima is notorious as the site of a series of bloody unsolved murders some even say it's haunted but one thing's for sure it's the perfect destination for the k university's mystery club trip but when the first club member turns up dead the remaining amateur sleuths realize they need all of their murder mystery expertise to get off the island alive so it has like that meta quality to it and it's got my all-time favorite trope so i'm thinking that this could be a five star then for the crooked house murder, this one is as a classic Japanese locked room mystery. And it says, the crooked house sits on a snowbound cliff at the remote northern tip of Japan. A curious place to build a house, but even more curious is the house itself. A maze of sloping floors and strange staircases full of blood curdling masks and uncanny dolls. When a guest is found murdered in seemingly impossible circumstances, the police are called, but they are unable to solve the puzzle and more bizarre, bizarre deaths follow. And then like a renowned sleuth gets on the case. So this one also sounds very much my jam. So those are the two from that co initial cohort of books, because I'm assuming I'm going to love this and I'm going to pick up a bunch more from this sort of region and the kind of mysteries they write, because there's so many, like I've seen so many people recommend Japanese mysteries to me, and I've seen so many titles that sounded appealing. I am manifesting that this is going to be a big hit and there's going to be more to come. <laughs> I don't tend to like Scandi mysteries as much and it makes me feel sad. So I'm manifesting that <laughs> Japan is going to be my place. And of that original kind of cohort of the ones that I have for the project, those are the two that I think could be five stars. The other, my last five star pick and the other mystery is The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson. I picked this because it's been comped directly to me as an Agatha Christie-esque book that is like the thing. It's a, I think it's a country house mystery. Everybody who is like a big fan of, let's see, three rival actress t actresses team up to solve a murder at the stately home of Latisse Davenport, the author whose sleuthing creation of the 1930s, Dahlia Lively, had made each of them famous to a new generation. So it's like a con for this kind of Agatha Christie-esque writer. And each of these women has played her like main detective before and somebody dies at the con and they're all gonna try to solve it together. It has that meta element that I like and it just seems like my kind of mystery. So I'm hopeful that this will also be five stars. Actually, if I was gonna pick a third one, I would say The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels based on the strength of the recommendation I got for it from Meg with Books, and she's my book twin, but also it's mixed media. Okay, you know what? It's back here somewhere. I didn't pull it. Let's also, let's just go ahead and put that one in here too. That's my sixth five-star prediction. So those are the six that I'm predicting I'm going to give five stars to, four of which are mysteries. Kind of ambitious because I, it's hard to get a five-star from me on a mystery, but well, okay, we're shooting for the moon here. So that will do it for this video. Let me know what you thought about any of the books I talked about. Let me know if you have strong feelings about if I am or am not going to like some of the books that I am predicting. <laughs> and uh, like I said, let me know if you'd be interested in me doing another head to head where I let the picks from my patrons and members drive a five star prediction list and we can compare how we did between the two of us. So yeah, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe, hit the notification bell because YouTube is very lackadaisical and petty and when it will or will not notify you about such things. So yeah, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.